Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing the Colorado ZR2. This one, as you will notice, automatically has some factory, well not factory, but installed at dealership rack or whatever you want to call it. This is made out of boron and it also has our lights on top trail lights as i like to call them because they are extremely bright and there's no trail that they will not light up you also get the custom zr2 cut out in this you also get these on any other general motors truck but they they are specific to your model so you get a silverado it says silverado here you get a sierra it says sierra here and etc you have the ZR2 badge on the back instead of where you would see your 4x4 or Z71 badge. You have your basic Colorado, which will always be covered in dirt. If you have a ZR2, I am sure that I will be receiving many promises from that. Um, the obvious from the regular Colorado is that that front bumper has been cut off a little bit so that we can get some more wheel clearance. This is an off-road focused car. The ZR2 is an off-road focused vehicle. This vehicle has been in competition on pages like TFL Truck and Redline Reviews. It has outbeaten the Raptor and the Wrangler, as a matter of fact, on the Moab trails of Utah. So this has very much been proven. Your boron continues down here. And if you have an obsession for this boron, you can get even more of it on the bison, the ZR2 bison, because this actually isn't the highest uh, package. There is a ZR2 bison that comes with bumpers from AEG, the company that works hand in hand with Chevy to create this. You get an AEG bumper, which is bigger, comes with more boron on the back. You get AEG, uh, special rims that come with only the bison you get the aeg front bumper that has a lot more boron on the bottom covers up parts of your wheel fills in here you have boron on the bottom here so when you hit a rock or whatever it hits your boron instead of steel no bending on boron boron is actually so strong in fact that the fire departments of the United States recommend that vehicles do not use boron. In fact, it is illegal to use boron on the interior parts of the frame or parts of the car that keep your passengers inside, per se, because the jaws of life, which people that don't know are a huge pair of scissors that the fire departments are given to open up these cars, cut through this metal and get to you whenever you get in an accident. This stuff is too hard to be caught cut by those bars so therefore it can only be put on the outside of the vehicle if it is not part of what is keeping the customers inside of the vehicle and this boron on the side is functional as well this is for when you're coming over your huge rocks and whatnot on the trail you get a big drop off you get that big drop off what happens when that rock hits up here and causes damage to your door or even cracks your windshield or your window and a whole bunch more this boron on the bottom here takes that punishment. Your truck continues to slide on and you continue on down the trail. Just one of the many reasons why the ZR2 is so capable. The ZR2 is also very capable as a daily driver. It is very comfortable as we will be covering the interior. You have performant shocks for um, off-roading here. These are very very good they come on the trail boss as well they work very nicely here on the passenger side on the inside of the zr2 you realize that the zr2 doesn't look too different from your regular uh colorado on the inside you have your top of the line options however you do have your wireless charging here you have these which you will not find on any other colorado you have your front and back differential lockers for off-roading you have your traction control you have all the buttons you would find on any other General Motors pickup at this time and they all are very accessible easy to see from the driver's seat easy to see wherever you might need to see them easy to use easy to comprehend because every button that you press down here displays a message up in your little mini infotainment for you to confirm with your truck all right, now moving on to the back, 
Unfortunately, this does not have your auto tailgate. However, it does come down very nicely. You see that I'm not touching it and it's still coming down very slowly. Uh, your bed in the back of the Colorado is standard size. There's no different size in the ZR2 or the Bison. This is the same size that you would get in any other Colorado. And it's a decent sized bed for a mid-sized truck. You can fit a lot back here. It appears to be bigger on camera on uh, in person than it is on camera so don't let the camera take away all so much of your judgment of the space at the back of the Colorado because there is quite a much quite a bit now moving on to the inside if we come over here to the driver's seat the Colorado and the ZR2 I feel needs this needs to be addressed is because the Colorado sits at a perfect ride height to where it can be difficult for people of my height being that I'm 5'10 and a half 5'11 I'm still short yes I know um this was not easy this was a hard truck to get into uh, before it was lifted lifted now you are more so full step so you feel a little bit more muscle memory because it's a little bit normal but that uh, there's an awkward spots where the Colorado sits where the if you do get the optional running boards that you can put on here they stick out here and depending on your size they can, it will depend on how useful they are for you but as for somebody of my height I have found them to be very obstructive and I think that it is easier getting into the Colorado without those but that's just my own personal preference um, if they work for you and I would definitely not recommend you not trying at least to get those Colorado running boards to work for you because running boards are extremely helpful for those that uh, know exactly how to use them and find the uses to be of why they're buying the truck but to stop the rambling let's get moving on the first place you see is your hood now the hood protrudes on the ZR2, but nothing destructive, nothing that uh, disrupts your view. Uh, this is very easy to see around. It's not obstructive, like I said, and it's a pretty cool touch. It looks like a nice little hood scoop. It reminds you that you're not in the basic ZR2. This is the basic uh, Colorado. This is the ZR2. This is some special T to it, and Chevy gives you a little bit of a reminder by putting you, giving you a hood scoop, and they also give you this view to look at from up here because you're sitting higher than the Colorado as I said before and now moving into the actual car you see that we have the base Colorado steering wheel with heated steering wheel you have all the buttons you only have one blank, blank spot no button so no complaint for me I don't mind if there is no button if it's blank um now moving into the gauge cluster you see that we have analog fuel gauge, oil temperature, tachometer, and speedometer is all analog. And your little mini infotainment is right here in the middle. And it has the same configuration as MyLink does, so we won't go through that. If others would like to see the configurations of MyLink, I have best done that and best shown that off to uh, viewers in my Blazer video. So be sure that you check that one out if you want to learn a little bit more about MyLink and the features that are brought inside of it. Because the Blazer has a little bit more features than the ZR2, being that it's more of a family car and a little bit more feature savvy. The, the ZR2 comes with a Bose sound system. I always put a big emphasis on the Bose because Bose is great. It is a great sound system. Of course, I can't really demonstrate that for you on the camera because, well, then you're not really hearing the sound system. You're hearing your, your, uh, whatever you're watching, you're hearing that sound system, if that makes sense. Now, coming over to the infotainment system, the same. Very responsive, very easy to use, very easy to navigate, hard to get lost. I love it. I love that we keep it basic on the um, infotainment system and keep it the same throughout the models. Um, moving down, you have buttons that, these buttons go hand in hand with your infotainment system. This is your home button. You just press this and you come home to your home screen. Uh, you go back forward previous next these are with your songs and whatnot you also have the same buttons on the back of your steering wheel here you see my index finger you see my finger down here there's one up top so right here right here 
there's one on the bottom right here bottom is previous top is next same over here except on this side except for volume on the top is up and volume on the bottom is volume down very simple to remember very easy to get a feel for and it sits comfortably in your hand while you're on the steering wheel so you don't have to reach over here if you don't really want to um, you can use this as well to select through as you see it highlights my uh, selection and then you just press the little check button and you go right into whatever you have selected down here moving down we have a section for the climate controls very easy to use very straightforward and I like the fact that we're separating the buttons from their uses these ones are used for the infotainment and as such they stay close to the infotainment these ones are used for the climate so they have their own section as such these are used for your driving experience and these have their own experience as such I love that now your heated seats are down here so they're very easy to see I don't really know what this compartment is for I'm sure there's an interesting story at General Motors of why this was put in here it doesn't hurt it doesn't help but it's a little interesting why, why there's just a uh, little spot there. Inside the glove box, we have normal space. Nothing crazy to look at there. We have your wireless charger, as we covered earlier. You have two cup holders. You have an audio jack right here. Let me pull out this cord so you can see it. You have an audio jack here, two USBs, and an SD port. This is actually an SD card port. And if I pull out the little plastic card you'll see it's actually an SD card so you can put this in there for whatever you may use it for and voila next to that we have a lighter hole a cigarette lighter so plenty of outlets and charging for whatever you may need uh, no household outlet however but then again a household outlet it isn't the biggest deal let's face it in a car because when's the last time you had to dry your hair on the way to work <laughs> I know, I love my jokes. Um, moving on into the infotainment system. Something I haven't really uh, been doing a good job of showing is the fact that I'm in park right now. And the uh, you can go into your camera. You don't have to be in reverse to look at your camera. But also, if we shift into drive, this camera stays up. And if I move and then you get a little 8 second timer up here in the top right and it goes away it didn't display it there for some reason i'm assuming just because i shifted into gear prior to going into the camera app but as you saw it just cut off after eight seconds and this is because the federal regulations do not allow for you to be distracted and to combat that chevy adds a timer so you can't be distracted so long on that now moving on even further this is your light controls and this is your drivetrain controls. The only interest here is this works as normal, but this button here, if you hold that, it cuts on the lights on top of the vehicle, your trail lights as I called them earlier, and you can cut those off by pressing this button as well. It is very important to note, people do not use these lights on the highway. You will get ticketed and probably arrested. <laughs> Now moving on to here, the drive chain select. This is normal as usual, same as you would usually see. However, if you press this, you get a prompt on here that says off-road mode on, and this will bring your car to work almost as if it's in low gear. So you have an easier ability to crawl going uphill, going over rocks, and it gives you a little bit easier ability to make your truck really grip, if that makes sense. Your truck crawls rather than just pushes. It knows that it's gonna be on rocks in this off-road mode, and it knows that it's gonna be on loose terrain. So rather than just pushing the wheels, as it usually does, it will put a little bit more force on those wheels and hold them tight as they turn, so that way you get to your destination the same way as you would for towing and how that stiffens up your throttle response. Now, let's move on to the back. And the back, of course, is not hard to get into. This is a mid-sized truck. Excuse all the mess. This is, as I said, these trucks are new from the dealership. And this particular one only has about 50 miles on it. So you get this stuff. You get the plastic. You get the stuff that's going to be installed for the actual customer that comes to buy it. You have plastic down there. So don't actually 
look at this plastic as anything messy or anything more than just preparation for those that are actually gonna buy these vehicles. Now, give me one second to move this out and we'll continue. All right, welcome back. We're back in the ZR2, time to drive. Exciting. All right, so starting off, we're gonna take it out of off-road mode just because I want to feel how it feels uh, normal. I've been driving a little bit of this car, but of course I've been trying to keep the miles down because this is new for you guys to come in and buy. Um, I've been keeping the miles down, but I have driven a little bit and so far driving the ZR2 as I've had an impression at work driving as well is very subtle. It doesn't feel like you're lugging a whole bunch around and it doesn't feel like a full-size truck and as a matter of fact this feels like a crossover the size that it that it has like the size of this vehicle for what it is i take my word for this if you get in this thing it does not feel like a truck and at that it does not feel like a lifted truck you don't feel every little bump. you feel a little bit of something you don't feel every little bump. And the great thing about this is when you feel them big bumps, those performance shocks I showed you, those you feel just a little tiny bump and it just swallows it up, just swallows it up. Now, with the diff lockers now, I wanna kinda demonstrate a little bit as much as it may just look like I'm having fun. Your rear diffs make a substantial difference of how you can go over dirt and go over rocks anything your differential and i'm going to take a second to explain this your differential will lock your your back differential will lock the axle of those two wheels so it'll come together and they'll spin like this so both wheels will be interlocked and whatever one wheel moves the other wheel has to move as well this means when you're over a rock you got your rock under your front left tire and that's propping your left your right tire up into the air so you're not getting any grip on that and you're stuck well you put it your front differential lock on and your wheels turn the one that's on the ground turns and that in turn is connected to the other one that's in the air that one turns as well giving your truck enough traction and force to pull you over that rock and the same for in the back now also in the back those that are familiar with performance vehicles will know what a line lock is this also works the same as a line lock. So for some reason, if you ever need to kick up a little smoke or peel off the tires in your Colorado for whatever reason, it's easy, very easy. And it's very addicting and fun. And I also wouldn't recommend it for the streets. So don't do that if you don't want to get in trouble. Um, you're seeing a lot of bumps on your screen right now because I am on dirt right now because where else is this car gonna go? This car is made for the dirt. Swing it around real quick. Woo! <laughs> this thing is fun just in a, in a truck, just waiting for you to press the pedal and unleash it. It's not a crazy powerful engine or anything that's in this truck. This truck is powered by the same engine just about with different gearing and of course and different tuning to make it better for the truck. This is the same V6 that is in your Colorado, uh, not the Colorado, the uh, Traverse and the Premier and the, uh, not the Premier, I can't speak right now, I'm sorry, you see what I'm saying? It's in the Traverse and it's in the Blazer. And in both, it runs good, it feels good, and it feels like it just belongs in the car. And I feel, I'm starting to get that exact same feeling in this engine as well. Although it's the same engine, it sounds different. It sounds a little bit more trucky. It's got a little deep burble to it. It doesn't sound like a V8 or anything. It sounds decent. Of course, you're not buying this car for the sound. This V6 is enough power to get you over your rocks. This is enough power to power you through your sand dunes and through the Baja trails and whatnot. Um, however though, if this V6 is not enough torque for you, it doesn't give you enough crawl factor. And the reason I say that is because people that off-road and are, do are doing the rock climbing and whatnot are gonna, be crawl are gonna be trying to do a crawl, as they would call it. And now some cars have a mode for crawl and they allow you to 
hit cr press a button and put it onto a two mile per hour cruise control that is labeled as a crawl. That's basically what it is. Now, the crawl is all, the secret sauce for your crawl, per se, is torque. That's your idle speed. And although it's not much, you a lot of people use that idle, that idle speed as their crawl. And when you have less torque, that crawl is a lot weaker. And that's in turn for this V6 because it is a gas. And in that fact being known, Chevy has made the Duramax V6 turbo diesel, which also is in the ZR2 and the Bison. And that is a little bit better for those of you that are going to be taking this off road. Um, the diesel is just a better option for those that are going to drive the truck different is the best way of putting it. So if you are, look, are in the market for the ZR2, start thinking about, do I want the diesel? Do I want the uh, V6? They get around the same amount of gas mileage, just about. Um, they're decent on gas mileage. This one particular gets uh, 17 MSRP and uh, gets 17 MPG city and gets 24 highway, which is not bad. Um, of course it could be better, but then again, you got a lot of extra weight from all the skid plates and all the uh, boron and added from uh, uh, the ZR2 package that comes with. And uh, that, yeah, that gives you your, that gives you all the extra here. Um, now we're gonna give it a little bit of a push here and we're going to see what this, you can probably be able to hear what the V6 sounds like. Uh, the V6 powers up around the same, it feels and changes gears the exact same way that a full size truck would. would. So you don't feel like out of your element driving this after driving a regular truck. And of course, trucks aren't hard to drive, so if you think what I'm saying is intimidating, go ahead and throw yourself in it. Because there's no reason to be afraid of this thing. This thing is it's just your regular truck. There's no reason to be afraid of any car for that matter. Um, you never know till you try it. And many people that end up buying the ZR2 happen to be the people that work a nine to five job and work in an office. So don't think that you have to buy this car and take it out to off-road. This car is a great daily driver. The big Goodyear Wranglers on this truck that comes standard do not make that horrible noise that you hear whenever you hit a shoulder on a on a highway. You don't get that from this ZR2 there. The, the tires are, and I give Goodyear all the credit in the world, Nobody has been able to make tires with such big tread without making that noise to such a little degree at least. So I give Goodyear a hell of a lot of credit on that. The ZR2 has a lot to talk about. It doesn't seem like it because it's just a, many people, many people that criticize it see it as just a souped up ZR2 that's got bigger shocks and a little bit of a lift on it. But I make these videos to clarify and give you my opinion and hopefully offer you a little bit of uh, help that helps you on your next purchase or just comes to you as it comes to me when I watch these videos that wow there is a different viewpoint there's a different way to see it and these car reviews are something that I do for you guys to get the best use out of them for yourself so if you're in the market for a new car watch these videos I hope that they help you you are interested like I am just love cars and want to know more you can never know enough that works too I accept all the love and I hope that you will like comment and subscribe and join the family because I need more of you guys here and I would love to have more of you guys here watching my videos now I have a little special video coming soon and that should be fun stay tuned for that other than that everybody have a great day stay classy i guess we still say that that came out of my mouth <laughs> stay classy have fun be safe and have a good one